Hey everyone, Ellery, the health adventurer here, and I wanted to talk about this interesting idea of detoxification versus retoxification, or detox versus retox. Um, it's something that has come into my head several times, um, and I know it's something that I think people think about, whether consciously or not, when they look at things like doing a raw vegan diet or a fruitarian diet or any of these kind of extreme diets or cleanses, um, you know, how do I know if all these detoxification symptoms that I'm experiencing are really detoxification or if I'm hurting myself? And I think that's really important, and I don't think there's a blanket answer um, for everyone, you know, because everyone is really different, and I think it's really important to listen to your body and do what you feel is right for you. You know, go to your doctor if you have to, get blood tests done, um, you know, see what's going on, just get an idea, get those tests done and stuff. Um, I'm actually going to be picking up a glucometer today just to see, you know, hey, how does fruit affect my blood sugar levels? Because that's something that a lot of people are concerned about. Um, you know, hey, does, does eating fruit all day long spike your blood sugar too much? Is that going to be a problem? Um, for me, you know, I actually, um, I was watching uh, Mark James Gordon. He works with Dr. Robert Morris, or he's worked under him. He's learned from him, and he has his own clients uh, who he works with for detoxification, and he was live on YouTube uh, just a little bit ago. He might actually still be live. And I was asking, I actually asked him that very question, and I said, you know, how do you determine what's detoxification and, you know, what's, when are you hurting yourself? And, you know, his response was basically saying, you know, trust yourself, but do more research, and if you have to go to the ER, you know, go to the ER. If it's really serious, like, do what you have to do. Um, you know, so I, you know, that was an okay answer I felt like, but I do also feel that doing testing, you know, from start to finish is a good idea, and I know I've kind of lacked on doing some of the testing. It, it is a little bit expensive too sometimes to do testing on every little thing or to know, to even know what to test all the time. So, um, so it's a process, you know, and I'm just doing the best that I can given my situation. Um, so the glucometer shouldn't cost me too much to test that. Um, I think that with the test strips and everything, it'll initially cost me maybe $50 or so, and then month, <laughs> thank you so much, um, month after month, you know, it might cost me $20 a month or something like that, just getting the, the test strips. So I think that's a pretty, you know, that's not too bad of an, an investment. Um, but I also, in asking that question to Mark's James, Mark James Gordon, his name is kind of a tongue twister. Um, I, in asking that question, I kind of started thinking about it, and I, I started to kind of answer my own question, um, just reflecting on the last two months of being raw vegan and fruitarian. Um, I guess for about a month or so, around two weeks, I was raw vegan, and then I pretty much became fruitarian after that. Um, so for me, uh, first of all, I've noticed that if there's kind of like inconsistent reactions with a food, then I consider that to be more like detox. So, um, you know, if I if I use, let's say if I do a grape juice, or not grape juice, um, if I eat only grapes for uh, a couple of days or something like that, or only watermelons, and if I notice that, you know, sometimes when I eat, um, let's see, <laughs> you know there's a vegetarian but so obese, it's true that there are unhealthy vegans and unhealthy vegetarians. Uh, there's junk food, there's vegetarian and vegan junk food out there. So I try to stick to whole foods and I mostly only eat fruit. So, um, but what I was saying about inconsistencies, so if I'm, if, say I'm, I'm eating watermelon for a couple days or something like that and I notice that sometimes I'll have a reaction and then later I, I feel good and then you know the next day I, you know I'm kind of tired and then I and then I feel better again and then you know when I eat watermelon on its own like within the scope of my diet you know maybe I have a banana smoothie for breakfast or something and then I can't eat like something else and I'm like okay well I don't think it's that food it's not a food sensitivity um, however I still would like to see some verification um, you know that basically <laughs> um, I don't know what the, uh, sorry, I missed the comment, but um, I, I still want to see that my blood tests are, are 
showing that they're good. So um, that's something that I would like to do. I still haven't done um, you know, a physical or anything like that. Isn't it boring just to eat fruit? Um, I felt that way at first. You know, when I first started um, just eating fruit, and again, I don't know if this is something I'm going to do for a long term, um, but at least for the issues that I've had, um, you know, I want to see <laughs> my, I couldn't live without beef. Yeah, so a lot of people really feel, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't live without this, or, you know, fruit would just be so boring just to eat only fruit. Um, the first couple of days were really, really hard going raw vegan, and I felt like, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like, how do I not eat anything cooked? I mean, even just not having steamed vegetables was really difficult for me. Um, but then over time, it got easier and easier and easier for me. And, you know, I noticed that I had this issue with my hands where my hands were just closing up on me, um, just whenever they felt like it. It was a really weird thing, mostly at night. Um, but no matter what I did, if I, you know, I, I've had a lot of intra, uh, injuries uh, with my hands, like tendonitis and that sort of thing. So I was really careful. I didn't use my hands for, for anything, you know, my phone or the computer. I was really, really careful, and it wasn't enough. And then, you know, just eating only the fruit, all of a sudden I was starting to notice slowly that my hands were starting to do this a lot less, and it was less severe. And now my hands are doing really, really well. So this is two months later. My hands are doing really well. So that's another thing too, like noticing that, hey, you know, since when I started to now, my hands are doing a lot better. And this was a really severe, severe health crisis that I had. And looking at that and going, hey, the only thing I changed was my diet. You know, to me, the conclusion is, hey, this looks like this works for me. Um, will it work for me long term, though, is the question that I have, I have yet to answer. Aren't you afraid it's not a balanced diet, though? Um, yeah, that thought does come to my head sometimes. I'm like, okay, should I eat some, maybe I should try some raw sushi or something like that. Or, um, you know, the, the vegetables is an interesting one because I thought, you know, hey, I can incorporate vegetables and get my minerals that way. But eating raw vegetables for me doesn't work. It actually creates a negative reaction into my, in my hands. So that just kind of makes me, anything that gives me a bad reaction to my hands like that, it, it just sets me back and I just stay away from it. But the interesting thing is that I found that there are certain powders like spirulina and chlorella and some other things that actually have vegetables in it that for whatever reason um, I don't have a reaction to. And I've used them individually in just a you know pure banana smoothie, bananas I have no reaction to. Um, and all five, I, I use well four, four green powders and, and then I use a a calcium supplement as well because I noticed that I'm a little bit low, uh, that zilch carbs and amino acids. Yeah, okay, so yeah, amino acids and all that. So protein, um, I, I, you know, I do notice that uh, if I log into Chronometer, which is what I use, um, protein is the one thing that is a little bit lower than it probably should be. It'll be between, for my weight, I probably weigh about 110 or something like that. Um, you know, I'm short. <laughs> And I don't weigh very much, so my protein requirements are probably about 40 grams, and I tend to get maybe 30 to 38 grams depending on what I eat that day. So, you know, looking at that, I'm like, okay, well, maybe eventually I'm going to want to incorporate more. You know, maybe I'll try incorporating some raw sushi or something like that in the future. Um, but for now, just to be on the safe side, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, yeah, the health is the most important thing to me. So, and like I said, what has been working seems to be the fruit, but I don't know if it's gonna work for a long term. So, like I said, time will tell. And uh, yeah, um, so detoxing versus retoxing. Uh, over time, you know, I think for me, just noticing that things have gotten better, um, I tend to accept, you know, most of these types of symptoms as just being detox. But like I said, I'm gonna get that glucometer and check it out and, and just see, hey, you know, if I'm feeling really bad, maybe that's a good time to check my, my blood sugar and see if that has anything to do with it since that's something that's really simple to do. Um, so that's, that's the thing. There's not very much research on this stuff or studies out there. Um, so, you know, for me, I'm just looking at it like, hey, <laughs> I'm gonna experiment on myself and do the best that I can because uh, I would like to see if there's a different approach besides just taking medication for the rest of my life and uh, 
yeah, I'm just trying to keep an open mind. So that's, that's my mindset in approaching these types of things. So it's totally understandable. No, I actually, I do not smoke. Um, I like to keep my lungs good and healthy. And I also like to, uh, I like to stay really aware of my environment and everything around me. Um, I've, I've had bad reactions to smoking before. I've tried, um, I have tried marijuana in the past um, and it, it didn't go well for me. So, um, you know, I pretty much just stick to clean diet and, you know, I try to be as positive as I can uh, and taking care of those emotions. That's a big thing too. Uh, stress is a really big uh, killer. So definitely good to, uh, you know, meditate and do all those things. And then on top of that, um, you know, the diet is really important too. Having great relationships, you know, really building those, um, you know, keeping relationships as a, a, a important thing in your in your life too. I think uh, because that also affects how healthy and happy you are. So, what do I snack on in between meals? Um, so, it, you know, I don't eat the same thing every single day. Um, today, for example, I had a bunch of grapes in my fridge, so I was just kind of snacking on grapes quite a bit. Um, I will say I do try to be really careful, you know, with my teeth because I eating all the all these you know fruits and some of them are a little bit at least acidic initially you know they have an alkalizing effect on your body um, but hitting your teeth um, and this is something that Mark James Gordon also was talking about too earlier on the live channel he was responding to you know I told him that was something I was experiencing was sometimes I would have tooth sensitivity and uh, you know first of all a lot of the fruit that we that we get is actually picked on ripe so that's a big problem right there and that will create more acidity. So, you know, I try to wash my, my mouth out um, with baking soda and water throughout the day just to keep that acidity um, a lot lower. So that's, that's another thing that I do think about, and that is also another factor into, you know, if I may start incorporating more, you know, raw sushi or something like that. And if, even if I have to go with some cooked vegetables, maybe the cooked vegetables for me, will end up being better just simply because, you know, maybe just periodically, uh, just to keep some of that acidity on my teeth down or something like that. You know, I'm open to changing my diet. I'm certainly, I'm not married to any particular diet. I am committed to my health. That's the most important thing to me. And especially, like I said, something like my hands not working right, I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do <laughs> to, uh, to have that because it really affects quality of life. It's really, really important. Um, so yeah, it's detoxing is, is something that a lot of people question, you know, Hey, are those detox symptoms actually something else? And it's a very, very good question. And I think I would just continue to ask that question and, and dig deeper, you know, yes, I floss, I floss every day. That's very healthy to do. Keep those teeth clean. Um, so yeah, if you have questions like that, you know, definitely I agree with Mark James Gordon's comment about um, you know doing more research and, and educating yourself and interpreting information as as you feel is right so um, that's what I have to say about that for today um, I think that's about it for now uh, I'll be coming back here again I'll be showing you what's going on like I was saying with the uh, the glucometer I want to see what's happening um, after I eat you know, a, a fruit meal, and what happens, you know, when I wake up in the morning, and what, what happens over a period of time, too, like, in two weeks, does it seem to have the same effect, or is something getting better, is something getting worse, or is it, you know, how does it, how does it go, and I will say that as far as blood sugar is concerned, um, adrenals do play a role into that as well, from what I understand, so we shall see. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Give me a follow, The Health Adventure. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.